Hello and welcome back to VMware Explore, live from Las Vegas. We're here breaking down the news and really coming into understanding how things are really evolving as VMware has its, really, its first big explore since the Broadcom acquisition. And I think a big important piece of that is partnership and ecosystem. And I think we could not have a better person on here. We have Tara Fine, who is the Vice President of America's Partner and Commercial Organization for Broadcom. Welcome on board, your, your you. first time on, on theCUBE. It so, is, I'm honored, thank yeah, you. You're now an alumnus of, of here, or alumni, so uh, you know, this, this will be there forever and you know, you'll love this afterwards, but I think one of the, the great pieces of VMware has always been the partner organization, and I, I think, again, it's, it help us understand really what you're overseeing with Broadcom now. Sure, sure. So prior to the acquisition, prior to November, I had uh, the, the, uh, the opportunity to lead our America's partner organization. And since the acquisition, we now integrated our commercial organization, our renewals team, and our partner organization into one. And I get the fortunate opportunity to lead that with three amazing peers that I get to work with every day. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it makes a lot of sense bringing those together and that the fact that Hawk Tan has you know, really talked about simplification and it would seem like that, that really is kind of some of the reasoning behind that, I, I would assume. And has that been your experience with Broadcom? Yeah, it really is one face to the partner, right? So prior, a partner, depending on the route to market and depending on what they were purchasing and who the customer was that they were servicing, they may have different interactions with different people across the partner organization, so we've really streamlined that. Yeah, we got to talk to Hawk Tan a little bit even before I just came up here, and one of the things I think he really emphasized as well is that he's really looking at how the partners will help in, their, in the journey with VCF and with the new, you know, consolidated SKUs. How, what have you been hearing from partners as you go through this transition? Because I, again, it has been a lot of transition, but it, and a lot of simplification in, mm -hmm. in that way as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, it has been a lot of transition. Um, certainly the most I've ever experienced in my career. Uh, but it has been a really fascinating experience to watch, you know, exactly what's happened inside. And one of the benefits we're seeing internally and externally is really that simplification. So we've gone from 8,000 SKUs to four. I mean, I couldn't think of anything a partner has asked for more, you know, in the last number of years is please simplify. You're complicated to deal with. Uh, you have different licensing models depending on the product. So just that simplification in itself has been a huge, huge benefit to our partners. Yes, we're, we are, there is some bumps in the road and we are, are absolutely transforming our entire business. Um, and so it's been a tough year, but at the same time, I think that the alternative was it happening over the next three to five years. And so it's, you know, it's challenging, but I, I really believe the other side is going to be very fruitful internally and for our partners. Yeah, because it's not only transitioning from uh, how the partners had to re-sign up and things of that nature, but it also has to do with the fact that there was transition in the type of SKU it is, because now it's gone from there being a perpetual to being all subscription. How has that really played out with the, the partners as well? I mean, it's really been a rip the band-aid off uh, scenario. We had tried for a number of years to make that move and Hawk is bold. Um, and so partners are really buying into it and they see the benefit. Um, and, and so we're starting to see the traction there. It will take time. Um, and it, you know, is, is quite the adjustment for our partners, but as they're leaning in and as they're looking for help and enablement, we're right there with them and we're working with them to really help our customers get to the other side. And, and when you're talking about partners, you're, you're talking about value-added resellers. Correct, yeah. yes. And I, I think, you know, and Hawk you know, talked about one of the ones that's really leaning in with uh, WWT and some of the things that they're doing, they've always had a great uh, relationship with VMware and they have their experience center that they bring people into and be able to show them. Are you finding that uh, people like WWT and others in that type of thing that bringing the end user customers along and they're a big piece of that 
experience as well because, again, they're, the customers are in transition as well with coming to grips with all of the, the changes with the licensing as well. Is mm -hmm. that a big piece of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think personally, I've always, my, my uh, you know, at the core, I believe partners are the way to the future. I've spent half of my career in the channel organization. Uh, I believe our partners are the way we're going to get there. And so part of my job is both advocating internally and externally around the value that they bring. And that includes having those conversations with Hawk and you know, giving him the exposure to what our partners are doing and helping him get to know those partners. And he's so receptive. I mean, it's really unbelievable. Yeah. Um, it's, it's exciting, he wants to hear more, he wants to learn more, and he's leaning in, he's leaning in. Yeah, how, how has, I, I guess, again, coming over with VMware and Broadcom had had channel programs and you know, bars before, how has that evolved? Have you seen others where you're being able to leverage what's been done with Broadcom before, and how is that really working? Yeah, so, so one of the areas that was a transition for us and a transformation is the program. So we went from Partner Connect program to the Broadcom Advantage program, and that was a, a fundamental change for us. There's a, there's a few pieces there um, that I think have really benefited our partners. Number one, you know, simplification, this radical simplification, whether it's our portfolio, whether it's our programs, um, is really, you can, it really comes to fruition in the uh, Broadcom Advantage program. So we have, uh, you know, with front end rebates versus back end, uh, a lot of predictability around that profitability for our partners. We've got free training, uh, which our partners had been asking for for years. There's so many advantages that we're seeing. And you know, one of the areas that I've heard that I think is a misconception around this invite only, which it is an invite only partner program, but we invited every single partner that did business with us in the last three years. Yeah, um, so that, that I think is a misconception yeah. that's out there is yeah. that, hey, only certain people got recruited in, things of that nature. What, is, what other misconceptions might there be out there or anything that you want to clear up besides that? It's a great question. Um, I think there's, uh, there's many, and I think we're still in transition. So, you know, as we continue to evolve, we know that we're part of the Advantage program today. Yesterday we had our first advisory council, our partner advisory council. So we're still learning and listening. We're in the stabilized phase now, but we're going to make tweaks come November and our fiscal year is upcoming. That's when we're going to start to really make some more changes around what we're hearing from partners and making sure that we're doing the right thing to get our partners to stay in the game with us. Yeah, because this is basically fourth quarter <laughs> for Broadcom. Uh, and exactly. you know, be coming out, I think it's November 3rd, is Q1, start of Q1 or Correct. something yeah. in that in that yeah. range. And I would say that you know this this is like you said, you know, getting to the point of hey, get through a full year yeah. with this and make those tweaks. Have you found it that from a, a, a culture, like you said, you know, Hawk is out there talking to them and learning back, you know, because it was a very different channel motion with uh, with VMware previously. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that it's it really is about making it as simple as possible to transact with, with VMware you know, being part of Broadcom. Is that the goals that are being set forth? Yes, I, I would say uh, you know, culturally there's a lot of changes externally, there's a lot of changes internally, but some of the real kind of interesting ones for me that have been such a benefit is, is this transparency. I mean, Hawk is the most transparent leader I think I've ever experienced. Um, and you know, the simplification runs throughout the organization and anything that adds complexity, we get rid of real quick because complexity equals cost. And so really focused on driving down, you know, keeping it as simple as we can across the board. And, and a lot of the value added resellers have always invested, like you said, in the training and things of that nature. And it seems like from what Hawk has been talking about from a partner perspective, he's really leaning into the partners to help, especially on the deployment side. Are you seeing that as, like you said, your the free training and things of that nature, do you see more of them leaning into that to be able to uh, help build businesses around this as well? 
They are uh, very excited about what Hawk is saying around services, and he's really not interested in being in the services business. He wants to give that to our partners. He believes they're better equipped to do it, and they do a better job of it. So, in fact, I just came from a meeting an hour ago where we were having that same conversation. So we think there is just an extraordinary amount of opportunity for our partners around services. And, and I would, I mean, some of them have done services around VMware, but like you said, there was some co opetition and sometimes it was on different paper and through an OEM or something like that. Has this really, is that part of the simplification that you're going to market with? Absolutely. It is part of the radical simplification. There's not going to be a hundred different services programs. We're really working through to get down to one or two that our partners can completely rally around and understand exactly how they are profitable, how they help their customers and do it really collaboratively with VMware. How are the partners, what feedback are you getting from them about the services, not only just the services that they're providing out, but they're, they're out there, they're the pointy end of the spear, talking to the customers about the transition in licenses, and you know, some, I was with a customer at lunch today, and you know, they're talking about how they're going through their renegotiation and things of that nature. How are they seeing it from that perspective? Are they seeing it, like you said, being much easier and simplified in the conversations that they're having? They are, so, so customers, it is a transition, but customers do see the value in the simplified platform. Um, they know that they could have taken longer to get to the other side, uh, but there is something to be said about having to move there quickly, and that'll only help speed up their business longer term. Yeah, and I, I think again, it was, you know, like I said, we. The great thing about being here is we get to talk to a lot of the customers as we transition through in the you know the hallway uh, conversations. It's definitely a hallway track. I, I think one of the things that uh, also has been is that they're looking for you know certifications and things of that nature from those partners. Is that a big piece as well? Because the partners have always had their their you know. VMware, you know, VDXCs and all of the different acronym soup of that. Is that still a big piece of that as it it's is. rolled out? It is, and, and as we've rolled out the new program, all of that has transitioned over uh, to the Broadcom Advantage program. So we grandfathered in all of partner statuses, all of those uh, certifications, so partners aren't starting from scratch. We really are recognizing all the investment that they've put in historically. Are, are you looking as you as part of this simplification, and when they're invited in, obviously not everybody stays in all the time, but when you start to look at it, are, are there incentives for them to continue to invest in kind of this area as well? Yeah, so what we're going to see over time as we're evolving the program, we are going to take the best of what was Partner Connect and evolve it into the Advantage program. So partners will get recognition for all of the different attributes of what they can bring to the table and how they service our customers. So whether that's deployment, anything around services, sales, et cetera, the whole gamut is what we're going to be recognizing them on in terms of their you know, level within the program and the benefits that they get. So what are, what are kind of the, just that high level, the different levels of the program? Like, because like, I know for instance on the cloud service provider MSP side, there's Pinnacle and those are the, the top, top exactly. partners. And things. Same naming convention, okay. so we've got Pinnacle, Premier, Select, and it kind of goes from there. We've moved from five levels in the old program to four in the current one. Okay but we did grandfather those partners into whatever level they were at uh, previously, and then we're rolling, you know, as we move into next year, we'll be looking for those new different streams in order to get to the evolved levels that we're going to be working towards. I'm sure they appreciate the status match. We always, well, everybody always <laughs> yeah. appreciates the status match when you go through Well, I that. mean, they've, they spent a lot of time and, and resources and money investing in VMware, yeah. and, and we don't take that for granted, and, and I want to make sure that they continue to do that, and we've got to keep listening, and we've got to keep collaborating, and you know, just making sure we're in the boat together. Like any relationship, there's rocky moments, um, but this is a, a real opportunity for us to continue to build that trust and, and stick in it together. Because I do think the other side is, uh, is incredibly exciting. Yeah, no, I, I think again, I, like you said, I, I think that we've been talking about it you know, for the last two days, that anybody who has thought that you know, Hawk was going to change, no, I think he's been very direct. He's the most direct leader I think I've ever had the chance to talk to about where his vision is and how he wants to get there. But I also 
he, he does listen. I, I think that was one of the things that was very interesting is that he is hearing what other people are saying and not afraid to question that stuff. Are you seeing, like, with uh, the relationships with these you know, partners, it's, it's definitely a different breed where, you know, I mean, Hawk's on stage this morning saying, hey, we're, we're in this to make money. <laughs> we're not a charity, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. you know, summarizing mm -hmm. that. Are you seeing them getting excited about that as well? Because if they sell, they make money, VMware, Broadcom makes money as well. I think what they've appreciated is the clarity. I mean, Hawk is so clear, you know, where he wants partners to play. And he's also very transparent. Um, you know, like your own experience, I, I get to experience Hawk quite frequently. Um, and it's fascinating. And I, I will tell you, I've never seen a CEO be, you know, that involved in the day-to-day the -day operations and really wanting to understand what is it our partners are experiencing, what are we hearing from them, just a genuine curiosity and making decisions on the fly based on that feedback. Yeah, so, so with the, the last thought, what, what do you want the partners that are out there watching this to, to know about this transition and where, where you're at and kind of what they can potentially expect? Because you said, hey, we're going to be making tweaks over the next, you know, fine, fine tuning, I mm -hmm. guess you could say, mm -hmm. uh, as you go through the last quarter here. I, I think the first thing, and Hawk mentioned it uh, yesterday in the partner keynote, is we recognize this has been incredibly disruptive. Um, and so I don't think his intention was to do that. That is what happened. Uh, so, you know, recognize that, know that it will get better. We are, I think, three quarters of the way through. Um, we are close to the other side of this. Um, and so I would just ask them to hang in there and those partners that are leaning in are going to see the benefit you know, as we move through the next year in our fiscal year and we get to the other side, you know, we're really looking forward to leaning in with the partners that are all in with us, and those are the ones I think are going to benefit long-term from this acquisition. Well, makes, makes total sense to me, and I, I think it's great that they have an advocate in you, uh, those partners, to uh, go. So thank you for coming on theCUBE. I really appreciate it. Thank and you this for has having been great. me. Thank you, so, yeah. it's an honor. Yeah, and thank you for watching this special from VMware Explore 2024. We're back shortly, so stay tuned, and we're coming to you from two sets and got a lot of great content coming your way. Stay tuned.